Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video on spray foam insulation. If you're new to this channel, the content that you're going to see here is all about spray foam insulation and its installation. We're doing mostly closed cell foam, two pound foam, and some half pound foam. It's a tool in the toolbox. We use the appropriate product for the appropriate applications. Uh, you're watching my guys spray the foam. This is in Canada. We are spraying Huntsman polyurethane heat lock uh, closed cell foam. That's the trade name, Heatlock, or we're using BASF, the purple stuff, which is called Waltite, which is an exclusive to Canada. In this particular video, we're going to be going over a stone foundation and how these are properly retrofitted with closed cell foam insulation. Uh, if you're familiar, uh, most homes nowadays have a poured concrete foundation. That's something that you would see from about 1920s onward. In fact, uh, from the 1920s, they would take the wood uh, timbers uh, that they use for floor joists they would use that for the cribbing to build up the forms for uh, the pour and they pour the foundation into it break all of them free you know retaining them that they weren't broke in and then use them for the floor joists prior to that rubble and rock uh, with mortar joints was what was used to provide some sort of a foundation to get the home started off the ground or slightly into the ground a lot of these homes have been retrofitted with additional poured concrete to brace and support them with some sort of a retaining underpinning to hold them in place but that doesn't remove the rubble uh, rock foundation that they still have and in fact in this video in these images that you can see the the uh, floor joists solid fur were placed on top of the stone uh, foundation and then mortar and additional stone were placed in between to keep them square and parallel and uh, the mortar was poured and cast in place as it would be so they're really set into the top of the rock these uh, foundations this rubble foundation is very difficult to insulate very difficult to keep warm the mortar joints begin to crack and crumble air is coming in insects start to live in them they become very drafty uh, mice ridden places and they're very difficult to retrofit until you incorporate closed cell foam now in my opinion uh, if you are anywhere in the cold weather climates where it's going to get freezing and stay freezing for quite a bit of time throughout the year uh, this is a this is a two pound medium density closed cell foam job all the way all day of the week only in very temperate climates where it's not excessively uh, cold would uh, open cell foam even be remotely considered so today we're just concentrating on what we're doing we're spraying the huntsman heat lock in this clients asking for a three inch application so we're going to put it on in two lifts we're going to put on a ceiling coat over top get sort of a profile into the rock crevices it can be really tough to get some of these sealed up because of all the nooks and crannies and then we're going to build up uh, the final thickness with our second pass the client talked about air leakages being an issue all the time uh, that they they had a drafty old place and that the uh, air was constantly coming into the basement and um, reducing the effectiveness of the return air plenum so that the when the system the furnaces were running or the furnace was running it wasn't getting a, a proper amount of return air suction cold air return from the rooms upstairs why drawing air through the stone foundation and causing air leakage to come in through the basement section so when this was properly retrofitted with the closed cell foam that eliminated that immediately so up into the floor joist areas all the way out to the ends of the floor joists uh, putting a belt a three foot belt of closed cell foam all the way around tying that into the retaining wall that he had uh, uneven profile is difficult to get into but eventually with enough material uh, you can get it sealed I always allow for extra space extra percentages if you're a spray foam guy and you're bidding these jobs you know add an extra foot onto your height add an extra 20 or 30 percent because you're gonna pay for it either way either you make the client pay for it or you're gonna be paying for it but somebody's gonna be using it so it is not just the height times the length and, and treat it as such you've got to allow for proper set offs the spray foam will mimic the profile of the rock so don't expect everything to be smooth unless you're putting on huge copious amounts of foam where you've eventually eliminated the profile but for the most part a good proper nice looking job should be the profile of the rock 
uh, telegraphing through on the spray foam. The client noticed the air tightness of this right away. The next day after we had completed the job, I followed up with him and said, you know, how are things going? And he said, amazing. He said the first thing he noticed was the return air issues were gone, uh, the cold air return, that now the air wasn't being drawn through the mortar joints uh, and, and cheating to come into the house. Instead, they were getting proper draw and suction back down into the basement uh, through the ductwork as they should. So no more issues. This is going to mean that the rooms upstairs are going to be a whole lot warmer. And then a lot of people are going to ask before this video is over, should we be doing this? Is this the right material? Should we be letting the rock breathe? The answer is no. Like this is the one and only time and proper shot to get these sealed. You do not want air leakage, exfiltration of air going through the rock, through the mortar uh, joints. That's where it's going through. It's not going through the actual rock itself, but through the actual assembly wall carrying the moisture with it and then condensing, finding somewhere to freeze and then breaking and busting apart those uh, mortar joints. When you put the closed cell foam sufficiently thick on the inside, you know, inch and a half at least, you know, two or even three inches of foam, now all of a sudden the air can't get through, the heat can't get through, so you finally have isolated it from the interior side and you're not having this constant wicking effect and exfiltration from in to out. Uh, and then you're not going to have excess heat coming through from the inside to outside either which is going to be causing problems within the wall assembly you know moving the dew point around causing rock uh and the joints to break apart and we've we've answered this before with brick buildings i've actually got a video you can find it in the in the playlists uh i've got one should old brick buildings and what have you be spray foam very similar answers because they're both dealing with uh, mortar and mortar joints and air leakage within the wall assembly so this is the correct way to retrofit these, get them sealed up, and then you're not going to have uh, a longevity issue with things breaking apart, and then you don't have your air leakage, you don't have your bugs and your beetles and your mice coming in. This is just the absolute best way, the only way in my opinion, to get these properly uh, dealt with into the modern age where the solution we're giving is as modern as tomorrow is. So there you go, simple, another job down, uh, another happy customer. Uh, bill was paid right away everybody's in good spirits so uh, on to another one so if you like this video uh, click on the like click on the subscribe click on the share leave a comment we'd like to hear from you and catch us on the next one so we're continuing to grow the content see you then